start this job, I'm going to remove the wheel first with a little screwdriver or pry bar, pry the center cap off, and then remove all six of your 22 millimeter lug nuts. And go ahead and remove your wheel. To start replacing the caliper, I want to crack open the banjo bolt. It'll be a lot easier to do this with the caliper mounted and then just snug it up. Don't make it tight, just snug it so the fluid doesn't drip. Next, remove the two 17 millimeter bolts that hold the caliper onto the bracket. Leave that on just a few threads. Remove the caliper and I like to put it up on top of the brakes here. Um, just make sure it doesn't pull on the brake hose because that can ruin it. The next thing is to remove the pads, set those aside. And once those are off, you can remove these two 18 millimeter bolts. That'll remove the bracket from the axle tube. Okay, leave that in just a few threads. Remove the two bolts and remove your old caliper bracket. With the new caliper, you want to take it apart and lubricate it just to get it ready for installation. So take that off. I'm going to take off the slider pins. And although they come with some grease, it's Nowhere near enough for uh, long-term lubrication, so add some more. Make sure you add some grease up there. That's where the boot seals up, and once you put it in, a lot of it's going to come out. That's normal, uh, but some also stays in there. So once you put it in, spin it, give it a few spins, and then to get the air out, push it and squeeze the boot. You'll hear the air squeeze out of there. Do the same to the other one if you want. You can add some right into the uh, boot, slide it in, give it a few twists. The next step is to add some grease right here where the hardware is going to sit. Not a lot, just a thin layer. If you put too much, it'll squeeze out and go onto the rotor and then you'll have issues. And do that to both sides. Then you want to take your new hardware that should come with the caliper, line it up and press it on. These little spring clips have to go on the inside. There we go. And of course, do that to both sides. Okay. Press it down all the way. Make sure it's seated. Now you can install your caliper bracket. You can add some thread locker on the caliper bracket bolts. Definitely clean them up, whatever you do, so that the threads are nice and uh, clean. And definitely do not add any C's. Bottom these out. And torque these to 148 foot-pounds. Next, take your brake pads, slide them on the caliper bracket. Make sure they slide on all the way. Then you can take your new caliper and just add a very thin layer of grease right onto the outer ring of the piston here. You don't need a lot, just a little bit to prevent the pads from making any noise and it'll create a watertight seal on the inside of the piston. And then you can add a little bit to these two ears here. That'll help reduce some noise as well. And then you can mount your caliper, push the sliders in, top and bottom. Now take your new caliper bolts, start these on, bottom them out, and I'll torque these to 31 foot-pounds. You might have to hold your slider with an 18 millimeter wrench so it doesn't spin while you torque it. Again, 31 foot-pounds. All right. Now you can remove your banjo bolt and the two brand new washers. Remove the old um, banjo bolt from the old caliper. So the inner washer sometimes gets extra crushed and it'll actually make threads on it and it won't let you pull the banjo bolt out. So what I like to do is get my little impact gun and some locking pliers, lock them onto that washer and then remove the bolt this way. Set those aside just in case there's any debris, clean off the end of this brake hose. Then you can take your new banjo bolt with one washer, slide it in, then take the other washer, slide it on from the bottom. You basically want a washer on each side, and then put it onto your caliper, make sure it doesn't cross thread, and then bottom it out. Now that it's bottomed out, I'm gonna take my wrench and make sure it's nice and tight. Usually I like to go about between a quarter and half a turn after it bottoms out. 
basically what you want to do is just compress those copper washers and that's going to form a nice tight seal between the brake hose and the caliper. Then with a 10 millimeter wrench, I'm going to open up this bleeder screw, remove the little dust cap, open up the bleeder screw and what this is going to do is it's going to allow gravity to pull fluid down and push the air out. Once a steady trickle of fluid comes out of here, we can close it and continue with a manual brake bleed. Now we have a steady trickle of fluid here with no air, so I'm going to close up this bleeder screw, snug it up, and what the manual brake bleed consists of is you'll have someone up inside the passenger compartment in the driver's seat uh, pumping up the brake pedal. Make sure your master cylinder is full. Once they hold pressure, you can go ahead and open up the bleeder screw, brake fluid, and potentially air is going to come out and then you can close up the bleeder screw, pump up again, hold pressure, open up, and repeat the process until you have no more air coming out of here. Once that's done, you can tighten up the bleeder screw, and don't forget to put on the little dust cap. This will prevent the bleeder from getting clogged up with debris. Now check your master cylinder one last time to make sure it's topped off, and let's get the wheel on. Next, go ahead and put the wheel back on. Start on all six of your lug nuts, bottom them out, and torque them to 140 foot-pounds. In a cross pattern, torque them to 140 foot-pounds. And don't forget about your center cap.